What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video and today we're here with the Alpine 12 Passive Cooler from the awesome guys over at Arctic. Now these guys are offering a completely silent option for your low and I guess mid-range type of CPUs that have a relatively low TDP. And today I have just the PC for this guy to go into. But first let's actually take a look at what we get in the box and what this actual cooler is all about. And in the box we don't exactly find a whole bunch, we find a massive block of of aluminium being the cooler itself, some uh, mounting hardware and a QR code manual. That's basically it. Now let's face it, no one reads the real paper manuals anymore. We throw them away and we just go on the internet to get whatever we need. So I really do think it's pretty interesting to see that Arctic is trying to cut down on, I guess, paper and stuff that comes in the box by just simply throwing in one of these QR codes, which is the same across all their other products that they do offer. The cooler itself is pretty actually solid. So as mentioned, this guy is completely passive offering no fan mounts and no fan options in the current configuration. Now the Alpine 12 Passive is an update to the Alpine 11 Passive, which is basically both a visual and slight performance department bump, offering a very nice matte black colour when compared to the older outdated silver of the Alpine 11, with slightly better cooling technologies and standards in there despite both of them being rated for 47 watts. This guy is supposedly a little bit better and all in all is just a nicer version than again the outgoing model. Again, that really nice black, really, really awesome. Now speaking of models, there's actually two different variants of them. They both come in with the same specifications, however they are separated by 1150X Intel mounts and AM4 mounts. So whether you're on the Intel or the AMD side, they do have an option for you, but they are two different SKUs. So do keep in mind, you can't just uh, pick up an Intel one and then say in a year's time drop that on to an AMD side, you do need to pick up which side because the actual mounting is drilled into the aluminium block rather than just using a mounting plate, so do keep that in mind. Finally, if we do have a closer look at the cooler itself, we do find ourselves some pre-applied Arctic MX2, which is actually not too bad thermal compound. Sure, it would have been nice to get Arctic's latest MX4, but overall it is a nice little bump here over the kind of generic kind of stuff that we would expect, and also do helps to cut down on mess caused by trying to use those little sachets of uh, the shipped thermal paste because they aren't really the greatest and they just make a big mess. So it's nice to see that it is actually pre-applied. Now whilst actually taking a look at this guy, we may notice there's quite a bit of heft, or well we can't see the heft, but this guy is actually pretty hefty. Coming in at 508 grams, whilst it doesn't sound like a whole lot in paper, when you actually hold it in the hand, it feels like a solid block of aluminium. Honestly, if there was a robbery and I had the choice between this guy and a baseball bat, I would take this guy any day. It's very, very solid and just feels like it's definitely up to the task. And that's mainly because because rather than having a fan to keep things cool, it needs to use that mass to help keep the system cool. Sure, when it all comes up to equal temperature, then it's going to come into surface area, but some of that mass will definitely help with cooling initially before it reaches its, I guess, sort of our equal state. Now, finally, that black anodized aluminium is really, really nice, but it also too grabs fingerprints and also too thermal paste that you accidentally get on it. So do make sure you keep your hands clean. And if you are going to be using some other thermal paste like Arctix MX4, or really any of the other awesome stuff, on the uh, market at the moment, do keep in mind that this guy is likely to go ahead and grab it and it is very hard to get off. I did find some isopropyl alcohol was one of the best ways to get it off, but if you keep wiping it down with the isopropyl alcohol, I'm sure you're gonna run into other problems down the line. Now, Arctic themselves claims that the anodization process of the actual black color helps to help with cooling. If we look at this graph, instead of just having the silver and some straight lines, we get flippy, bendy, super lines that apparently make things better with cooling. Unfortunately, I don't have the last generation here to do a side-by-side -side comparison when we get to performance, but either way, it is supposedly better here. Quickly touching on, installation is actually really simple with really clear instructions once you do get onto their online instructions, and I found them really easy to basically follow them along. I did find it easier, however, to go my own way rather than actually following the instructions, as when it came to actually lining up the cooler with the motherboard, I found it better to put the screws in first and then install the cooler rather than trying to line up the cooler and then trying to screw in the screws. Maybe it's just me, but I found putting all four in and then lining it up that way was a lot easier than uh, trying to line up the holes. But either way, once it was installed, it was really easy and basically you don't really need to take it off. Again, because there's no fan, you don't really have 
any moving parts, so there's no real problems here. But anyway, let's go ahead and actually start testing this thing, because sure, it's nice to look at, well, it's a big block of black aluminium and there's not too much going on here. Let's get into some testing for today. Now, today's main subject is my server. Now, for the most of the long time, it's been running stock coolers, which have been okay. But however, this thing gets run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. I have unfortunately had two Intel stock coolers fail me on this particular system. Not to mention they're loud, they're not the best in cooling, and overall, they're just not really that great when it comes to actually running as a CPU cooler. Sure, they get the job done, but for a server, it isn't too great. Also, too, if you're a follower of the server, chances are you've caught my 100 terabyte server setup video, and if you didn't catch that, you can find that up in the right-hand corner. Either way, this guy is running an old-school, sort of old-school Haswell Celeron G1840 CPU, and it has a TDP of 54 watt. And you might be thinking, hang on a second, 54 watt? That's higher than the 47 that Arctic is actually rating. What the hell are you doing? Well, yes, the Celeron is actually running at a higher TDP rating, here, but as we'll test out in just a moment, it won't necessarily be hitting that. But for today's more scientific side test, because I did run two different sets of tests, the tests of the real world, but also to the scientific one, I did pick up a couple i3s, including the Intel Core i3 7300T, a 35 watt TDP part, which is a very fair test for this cooler. But at this point, honestly, I think if it's going to be a low and mid range system that you're not maxing out all the time, even if it is rated for 54 watts, which is slightly higher than the 47, I really think without really doing any testing yet, it shouldn't be too bad. But let's get into some testing. First up, I grabbed all the different coolers and the CPUs and I ran Prime95 and the actual case it was in had the exhaust fan blowing inwards and the two front intakes blowing inwards with the top two fans being the exhaust. Now, the reason why I did this is I wanted a lot of air coming through the case and having a fair bit of movement. And I also too wanted that rear exhaust also to helping out when it came to the actual Alpine side. So going in there, I hit Prime95 and pushed play and honestly thought something was broken. I've spent quite some time lately going ahead and benchmarking 10, 12 and 16 core CPUs. I kind of forgot that the lower end CPUs don't instantly spike in temperatures and do have a bit more of a curve to their temperature increases. But once the CPUs came up to temperature, I left them for one hour at prime 95, 100% and we found our numbers right here. First off, if we go ahead and take a look at the numbers ran on our server, we find that that Celeron hits 78 degrees Celsius on the hottest core and on the coolest side, we hit 28 degrees Celsius and then jumping over to the Alpine passive we find hang on a second 66 degrees maximum temperature this may be down to a few things. First, because this is a more of a real world test, unfortunately the last Intel stock cooler that I used was a little bit gummed up with dust and not to mention, the actual heatsink didn't make that great kind of mount. If we take a look here at this shot, we find that the stock Intel pre-applied thermal paste didn't really spread around, it was kind of trash and wasn't exactly doing the world's best job. So if you are already running a lower end system and you're thinking about grabbing one of these, you may actually see a performance increase in cooling because the Arctic thermal paste is generally going to be a lot better than whatever Intel ships, not to mention the actual mounts that come with this cooler are a lot better than what you're finding on the Intel side. Now, with that being said, for the sake of actually doing a real, actual, physical, scientific kind of test, we did fire up our Core i3s, again, including that i3-7300T, and as we can see right here, for example, on that i3-7300T, we did find ourselves 66 degrees Celsius on the stock cooler and 69 degrees on the uh, Alpine cooler. Do note that the room temperature was 16 degrees Celsius, so if you are in a warmer client, you will be expecting to see slightly warmer temperatures. And even if we look at those standard i3s that were non-T editions, so standard 54 watt TDPs, they were perfectly fine as well. Now, with that being said, if you are in a warmer climate or if you're going to be doing stuff with high end, end i3s and i5s and heck, even i7s, they're probably not going to be as good. But especially your Pentium, Celerons and low i3s were definitely perfectly fine in today's testing. In today's performance front, the Pentium and Celerons, as I did just mention, definitely do run well. And even i3s, I personally would have no worries with running. Maybe Arctic wouldn't be so quick to jump to letting you run this on i3s and even i5s, but hey, they definitely do work. So I can't see anything wrong here. On the positive side with this guy, it is silent, it needs very minimum maintenance, and also too, it looks absolutely awesome. With a rated 47 watt TDP, I had no problems keeping my Pantiums and also two Celerons cool, and even Core i3s were able to be kept cool with decent airflow within your case. Sure, if you're in a really small PC case with no airflow, you're definitely going to be running into a little bit more problems here, but with a number of uh, 120mm fans, I definitely had no problems here. And, oh yeah, the construction was really 
really, really awesome. Though with that being said, on the downside, the pre-applied thermal paste was nice, but if you do have to remove this cooler for any surfacing in the future, maybe your CPU has a problem, unfortunately now you're going to have to wipe off that thermal paste and you're going to have to pick up some more. Don't get me wrong, Arctic definitely has a lot of different options out there and they're definitely awesome on the price point, but it would have also too been nice if they threw in like a little sachet of thermal paste in case you need to actually upgrade the system or work on the system in the future, it would be nice to have everything in the box, but it's hard to complain with some good quality stuff pre-applied and ready to go. Another downside is definitely when it comes to AMD and Intel mounts, you do have to buy two different versions and I can easily see this heatsink assembly actually lasting well into 10, even 20 years. So if for example, you've got two or three builds on the Intel side and let's say in the future AMD comes up and you really want to run some of their low end stuff when they do come out, Unfortunately, you will have to buy another cooler. It just isn't interchangeable. So it would have been nice to have some sort of mounting bracket that allowed uh, different versions here. But all in all, it is pretty hard to complain there. The 47 watt TDP was also too okay, but I would have liked to have seen them just jump it to 54 watt TDP. It seemed to work just fine in my testing here today. Might have just been what I was doing, but all in all, wasn't too bad. And honestly, it's pretty hard to find negatives about this particular product as it's really just a block of metal that straps to your CPU with some good quality thermal interface material between the metal and your CPU cooler. So all in all, TLDR time of this video, this guy is definitely a solid cooler, both in performance and how well it is built. With a 13 US dollar price point, it was also to not going to be breaking the bank and would be awesome for budget kind of low end HTPC type systems with a super nice aesthetic if you did have a side window as well. Arctic claims that that black coating also do helps in cooling, which I can't exactly test because I don't have wavy lines like this guy, but all in all, we do have a rated 47 watt TDP, but even 54 watt i3s and even Pentiums and Celerons were perfectly fine in today's testing right here. But do keep in mind, if you are in a much hotter environment or if you don't have as good uh, case airflow, you will be looking at slightly warmer temperatures. But definitely for a server, HTPC or lightweight gaming machine, this would be an epic option if you want that silent performance. And pretty much, it's a simple block of metal. What's really not to like? And if I had to sum up my experience in just a positive and a negative, the positive would be that there is no fan, so maintenance is a minimum, which is an epic plus. If you're lazy like me, servicing a PC can get quite annoying and seeing that there's no fan to be gummed up with dust really really awesome here and it's also pretty quiet and then my downside would have to be the TDP unfortunately it's only rated for 47 watts would have been nice to see 54 watts but all in all definitely gets the job done so thanks guys for watching and if you want to pick up one of these cool little coolers you can find them linked down in that description box they again do come in at a pretty decent price point and uh, let me know in the comment sections if you're interested in silent builds personally I really love the idea of having a completely silent build and this guy actually really really goes great for that kind of a build thanks to its aesthetic but do let me know down in the comment section again thanks all for watching and i'll catch you all in the next one